Hey, I'm Doug. Welcome to Backcountry Pilgrim, a channel devoted to hiking, backpacking, camping, and the Camino de Santiago. And today, it's also dedicated to everyday carry. A lot of us are finally going back to work now, so I thought it would be fun to go over what I carry on an everyday basis, as well as go over one of my favorite pieces of street gear, my tactical messenger bag. All right, so let's take a look at my everyday carry. First, set of keys. Pretty basic. I tried one of those little Swiss Army knife looking things one time to put the keys in, but there were several things that didn't work. First of all, uh, none of these keys will go on it. If you've got a fob, if you've got a thick car key, which most of us do, all of this ends up on a separate keychain anyway. And then I just don't really keep that many keys, so having this foldable set just didn't work that well. Uh, this bike lock key also did not fit in there, so I essentially ended up with two keys that were foldable. The other thing I like about this, as I'll show you later, is that it can be easily snapped onto carabiners, the clips that come with a lot of backpacks and that sort of thing, so I go pretty standard with the keys. Next, I've got my wallet. Now this is a knockoff from a more popular brand. I think this is called Lucas. I will put links to any relevant items in the video description below. But essentially what you've got here is an aluminum wallet. It's a minimalist type setup where it's basically just going to hold your cards for you. It's got a little money clip, elastic band with little rubber bumps on the back to hold your money or tickets or anything, receipts secure. But basically this is just a nice little compact item. It's tough. It is an RFID blocker and you just kind of fan it like a deck of playing cards to access what you're looking for and then it just snaps all back together. This is about 20 bucks. I like this a lot. Of course, phone. This is just a Samsung, something I got at Walmart. And then a uh, pocket knife. And I go back and forth between, you know, nice single blade style knives, but I found that it really is nice to just keep the good old classic Swiss Army knife. Uh, my dad actually got me this one in Yellowstone, got my name on it, so this is kind of special to me. I like the wood grain. I don't like to have a whole lot of stuff weighing me down and bulging out on the pockets, so I bring this. So this is a 511 product. This is the Rush Delivery Bag. This is the Lima or large size bag. It's 17 by 11 by 4, which gives it a carrying capacity of 12 liters. Now the size down from this is called the MIC, which stands for M or medium. It is 14 by 9.5 by 3.5, but it actually cuts the total storage capacity in half. And the reason why it loses so much volume just by coming in a little bit is because it's got a lot of interior organization, and unlike a classic messenger bag, which is really kind of a big you know, oval shaped bucket. This is a bag that is styled a lot more like maybe a briefcase, so it sacrifices some internal storage for internal organization. It makes the width of the bag very important, and if that's not what you want, and you want a classic messenger bag that sacrifices organization for storage, then get one of those. I've got one of those. That's what my Timbuktu classic bag is. That is not what this is. So I got the Lima, and even though this is a pretty large bag, it still is a much better carry for things like um, a few books, paperwork, and some office type items. On 511's website, they refer to this as a tactical delivery bag. And some of the things that I think warrant that description are the build quality is extremely tough. This is 1050 denier nylon, very strong. I've been banging this thing around for a year. It still pretty much looks like it did when I bought it. Uh, this color is called double tap gray. You've got drain holes in the bottom in case some moisture gets in, but it is a very water resistant material. Although I wouldn't call it waterproof, it's good enough for your everyday use. Now that does increase the weight of the bag. This is a three pound bag, so this is certainly not something I would consider ultra light. However, it is ultra tough. The outside has got the Molly webbing, so you can attach any kind of Molly compatible pouches, external storage to this bag that you want. It actually wraps around. The very back doesn't have any, but the side pockets do. So there is just a lot of places you can 
put extra storage. It's even got a couple loops on the top. The webbing is hook and loop, so you are able to attach morale patches, flags, that kind of thing to the sides and to the front, so you can kind of customize it any way you want. On the outside, two of my favorite features are these big pockets. I can literally get my entire hand in here, no problem. I actually use these pockets probably more than anything else on the bag, and I love the fact that they are on the exterior. So in addition to these two front pockets, you've also got these very interesting side pockets. The way these work is they flatten down pretty small, but you can also open them up with the side strap here, and they turn into pretty good size pouches. These are nearly nine inches tall and five inches around. Again, I can get my arm in here. Some people have complained that these aren't big enough, but here is a big Yeti sized tumbler. It fits absolutely no problem. I don't know how much liquid people are trying to bring with them, but you've got two of these pockets. Um, if that's not enough to get you through the day, then maybe you need to consider buying a backpack. If that's not what you're using the pouch for, you just cinch this down and it virtually disappears from the front of the bag. On the back, you've got a luggage strap, so if you're carrying this bag on top of your luggage, this can just slide right down over the carry handle. Because this is a messenger style bag, it does come with a stabilizer strap that you could use to wrap around your waist. I would normally not carry the bag that way unless I was on a bike, but given the places that I typically take this bag, such as work in the office, I'm not usually riding in on a bike. So what I've done is just routed this through these loops and up the side so that it stays completely out of the way. One of the things that makes this bag special is this back compartment which is fairly large and contains an ambidextrous zipper so that you can get to it whichever hand happens to be handy. Now what is this compartment for? Well, you could just throw some paperwork back here or whatever, but part of what makes this bag considered tactical is that you can throw a firearm holster in here. So if you get one that's got the hook and loop, it can just go right inside and now you've got access to a firearm right next to your side if you need it. Now this would not be my first choice of carry. Uh, I don't like the idea of a firearm being in a bag that I take off of my person, but if you're just moving from one place to another and you feel like you need that, that is an option. In addition to the zipper, there's a Velcro strip in here, which of course makes this uh, not terribly great if you're trying to operate in relative quiet. So what I did was I just got some Velcro strips. I just left the backing on and just ran it across. And so now, my bag is virtually silent. So that's the outside of the 511 Rush delivery bag. What do we have on the inside? This panel is reinforced. This is very, very stiff right here. If I want to get this panel open quickly, I've got to, you know, contort myself. I can easily carry this bag around without even using the straps. The bag is completely usable without them. Again, I've been using this for a year and a half. There's absolutely no trouble with wear on that hook and loop. So once you open up the bag, you don't have anything here. So as you can see, you've got a ton of organization here. There's a long pocket through and through. You've got pen size, you've got business card size, you've got a loop here, and you've got identical pockets on the other side here. Right behind this panel is a Velcro pocket. Not huge, but big enough to fit like a notebook. Right behind that is an open pocket. It's just slightly bigger, but it does not have any kind of retention. Behind that, you have a zippered pocket that's actually fairly large, and this just zips closed and gets way out of the way. Just this section right here is pretty amazing for how much it can carry. Now you will notice that the inside of this bag is very dark. I personally would have liked some different colored material in here so that I can see better. So on the inside, you've got a big pocket with a Velcro flap. There are two side pockets attached to the flap, and then right in front of those are two zippered mesh pockets. In between this whole thing is kind of the main body of the bag. The back panel here is almost completely covered in hook and loop, plus it has its own dual set of pockets. And then if you open that up, you have another compartment with a strap that can secure that. This is kind of where the laptop is designed to go. Now, this interior space disappears quite quickly. Once you fill any one of these main compartments up, it renders the others virtually useless for anything besides maybe thin books or paperwork. So in the Lima, you can get a 17 inch laptop, but once you do, because of the way this stretches out, you're not gonna have a whole lot more room. The bag looks really big, 
if you just open it up like a messenger bag. But once you start using the organizational pockets or stick anything substantial in here, it stretches out and now the bag becomes very thin. Again, what I want to point out is this is really a messenger style bag to replace a briefcase and not your classic messenger bag that you can just throw a whole bunch of stuff in. This is not your bug out bag. This is not your wilderness survival bag. What it is is a really tough messenger bag that's really designed more with the office in mind. I don't look at this as a multi-compartment bag with multiple pockets that can all be used at the same time. If you do carry a lot of small things and you want places to put them where you know you can find them quickly, then this bag works out fine. Last but not least, the strap. Really nicely padded. You've got more loops on here, so there's even more carry options. This just slides back and forth. The strap attaches with some large size buckles that are covered. Uh, some people have mistakenly referred to these as security. Uh, these are not secure. It's, it's absolutely just as easy to take the strap off with this on it as it is without it. It's not gonna keep you from accidentally releasing the strap or anything, but what it does do is help keep your fingers from getting pinched when you are releasing the buckle. Overall, I am a big fan of this. It runs about a hundred bucks. And as long as you understand what it's for, I think you'll really like it too. Now I'm gonna pack it up real quick. When I'm wearing the bag, this pocket is the easiest one for me to get to. So that is the pocket that gets the wallet, the knife. These are the things that I would keep in the pocket of my pants if I wasn't carrying the bag. So that's all that goes in this one. The other one, I keep a backup wallet. These are all the cards and things that I want to have around and accessible, but which do not have the level of importance as the things that I carry every day. Okay, so going inside, flashlight, tactical pen, knife, breath mints, business cards, medications, or highlighters. Notebook, in the zippered compartment, I keep an electronics organizer, and if it gets smashed while I'm walking around or dropping the bag, it's not gonna break anything in that electronics panel. I don't typically use the mesh pockets just because they become very difficult to get into rather quickly. I will usually use the very back pocket with the strap for paperwork. That strap keeps it from getting in the way. I'm already kind of running out of room. No way you're going to get a bike helmet in here. On the back drink pocket, I actually carry a very tiny umbrella, sanitizer. My keys go on the side and this gives me enough room that I can actually operate my car alarm. I can get into doors and then I can just let go and I know that everything is on this one bag. So there you go. There's my EDC and there's my everyday carrier tactical messenger bag. All right, I hope this has been informative to you. If it has, would you mind giving the video a like? Till next time, I'm Doug. This is Backcountry Pilgrim. <music>